Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, the big story today was the payrolls, which came out absolutely dismal. And, of course, the way things work in La La Land, which is Washington, D.C., uh, the speculation now is much, much higher that the Fed won't raise interest rates and will probably be forced to do QE4. I just recently did an interview with the uh, Sean of the SGT report. You should see that being posted pretty soon. We talked about some of those topics. So you can see here on the Dow, we had a big rally. Let's get in close so we can see. Uh, we had a big rally in the Dow and a big rally in silver. Basically, when the news came out, the market sold off initially. And then I think probably what happened was when they digested how bad it was, there was much more certainty that there would not be an interest rate increase and there's much more likelihood of a QE coming down the pike soon. So I think that's the reason why we got the spike in both of those. Uh, some really strange shenanigans going on in the currencies. You can see there an absolute uh, blast off in the val value of the euro and then a crash uh, again, these aren't real markets. Uh, same thing with the Japanese yen. Um, a huge increase in the value of the Japanese yen and then a complete retracement in one day. So uh, it's, it's just craziness. Don't attach too much importance to it. So just looking at the silver chart by itself, um, technically this looks probably more like a bottom than anything we've had for quite some time just because the longer view shows that uh, it's a decisive uptrend right when it was about to roll down. Now we know with silver it can do anything it wants but uh, that's an encouraging sign. The last time we had a serious bull market in silver was back here and that was the announcement of QE2. So QE4, will that coincide with a big rally in the precious metals? Probably, if that's what they decide to do. Now, let's uh, pull up the chart. I'm sorry, let's pull up the article from Zero Hedge. And uh, this is silver spikes to six-week highs on heavy volume. Biggest jump since December 2014. Precious metals are angrily bid this morning, even as copper and crude tumble after the dismal U.S. jobs data sent the U.S. dollar reeling and raised expectations for more QE down the line. Silver is up 5% on the day, the biggest daily jump since December 1st, 2014, and gold is up 2.2%, its best day since April. Silver is, sto is soaring. Now, does anybody really want to argue that silver isn't a monetary metal? We have big financial mo uh, news that moves the currencies dramatically, moves the stock market dramatically, and moves the precious metals dramatically, and silver moves twice as much as gold. And we're going to say that silver is not a monetary metal. Is there really anything that happened in the supply and demand of the silver market today? Or was this financial news? I think you know the answer. So let's look at another article here. This is about the silver shortage. And this is from the Daily Sheeple. Silver coin shortage is now a global phenomenon. While the price of silver has reached a five-year low, demand continues to surge in the opposite direction and not just in the United States. Reuters reports that both the U.S. Mint and the Canadian Mint had to ration their supply. That's interesting. They're using the word rationing. Ration their supply of silver coins last summer. While the Australia's Perth Mint had a record sales this month, they sold over 2.5 million ounces of silver in September, which was four times more than what they sold in August. Curiously, the rationing isn't being caused by an actual shortage of silver, at least according to the wholesale manager of the Perth Mint. Quote, There seems to be a bit of frenzy as people think that there's a shortage of silver, but in fact, it's a crunch in manufacturing capacity, end quote. The surge in demand is 
largely being fueled by what the Mint is calling mom and pop investors in the United States who want to take advantage of the price dip. As shortages worsen at the U.S. Mint, Americans are now buying coins from foreign mints and the demand is even spilling over into Asia and Europe. Still, the silver price continues to fall as the institutional and retail investors place their bets on the U.S. dollar and our supposedly improving economy. Prices will likely stagnate until these big money investors lose confidence in the global economy, but until that day arrives, lower income buyers will continue to outstrip the manufacturing capacity of national mints across the world, a trend which silver retailers expect to continue for at least another year. Very interesting. So let's take a look at that actual spike in the Perth Mint sales. This is from uh, SMA, S-M-A-U-G-L-D, Smoggled. And uh, this is the article, Perth Mint Sales. Perth Mint Silver and Gold Sales, September 2015. September Perth Mint Silver shares sales of 3.5 million ounces were up 366% year over year. New Silver Kangaroo Bullion Coin drives massive sales. Perth Mint Gold sales were down 2.1% in September year over year. Silver sales at Perth Mint in September 2015. The Perth Mint sold 3.5 million ounces of silver in September, up 366%. September 2015 silver sales at the Perth Mint were up 399% from the last month. Silver sales at the U.S. Mint were strong in September. The U.S. Mint sold 3.8 million one-ounce silver American Eagles, but the total was down from 4.1 American Eagles sold in September 2014. American Silver Eagle sales set monthly sales records June, July, and August of 2015 despite U.S. Mint production halts and allocations. In September, however, the restrictive allocations curbed sales enough to prevent year-over-year -year sales growth. Enter the Perth Mint Silver Kangaroo. The Perth Mint reacted to the silver shortages at the U.S. and Canadian mints by introducing a new silver bullion coin that would not be of limited mintage, but rather would be minted in such quantities to meet demand. We'll see about that. The new coin was an immediate hit by the end of September. Reuters reported that the Perth Mint had sold more than 2.5 million ounces of silver and begun rationing silver kangaroo coins. Today, Reuters Singapore noted that Perth Mint had emailed a statement that it had sold a record 3.5 million ounces of silver coins in September. And here's the chart. Look at that chart. Is that incredible? Now, the big thing I want to know, and you want to know, and everyone wants to know, how much of that was that kangaroo coin? How much of it was their traditional lunar series, their bars, their, uh, their um, the uh, koala, uh, the kookaburra, and all the rest of their coins. What is the mix? That's the number I really want to know. My guess is, my best guess is that this is primarily kangaroo sales that's going on here. And uh, that is really interesting. I mean, that there's so many things that would flow from that. Uh, thinking about the Perth Mint trying to break into the mass bullion market and if they're really serious about that. That would definitely make me reconsider my position about how Australia is positioning itself for what I believe will be the coming Chinese buy-up of all precious metals. So that's a very interesting thing to think about. I'm very curious what people think about that, and uh, I'm going to be interested to see what the news is when the numbers finally come out. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with is the Silver Lunar series here over on Atmex. We're still waiting for this uh, monkey to come in. Uh, it's not in yet, and that's the one we're really watching. Um, I haven't checked the kangaroo prices lately. I want to see what happens to those prices. We're going to be watching those going forward uh, with the Perth Mint mentioning that they're having to ration the coins now. Uh, and we want to know how many were sold. I, I think it's 
at this point a time to kind of hold off on the kangaroos just to wait and see how things shake out um, if there ends up being five or ten million of those or they become as common as silver eagles there might not be that much value in them now juxtapose that to what we're looking at with the lunar series and it's really incredible i always rank these uh, in pr price range low to high and you can see here that the lowest price we have here is eighteen dollars for a half ounce colorized goat i don't really mess with the colorized coins unless they're basically the same price as the others or lower basically near spot and i don't see that very often uh, the next one is the lunar goat here here's our goat at twenty dollars and sixty six cents so that's pretty impressive it's clear to me that they're done with that series but what's even more impressive than that is seeing the silver dragon up here at twenty seven dollars and sixty eight cents now can you get that for your dragons no i don't think you can and especially not in in bulk but that's certainly encouraging for those of us who bought those at twelve dollars and we've got the horse here we know we all stacked up on those as well same price twenty seven dollars and sixty eight cents for the half ounce silver lunar horse so i think we can all congratulate ourselves for concentrating on that coin i think that's going to be a, a tremendous winner for everybody who bought that uh, can the two ounce coins perform to that extent Probably not. If you think about the fact that uh, the two ounce coins, I think the cheapest that I was able to get any two ounce coins was around 40 bucks, a little bit below 40 bucks. And for that to perform in the same way, it has to go to at least 100 bucks. It's possible, but I don't think so. So I'm going to keep my eye open for the half ounce monkey. And that's going to be one I'm going to be watching very, very carefully to see how it's priced. And, of course, if the one ounce is priced at a reasonable price, I'll consider that. That has not happened for the last. Uh, the goat was the closest, I, lowest I saw him, around 25 bucks for the one ounce. But for the last four years or so, ever since the dragon coin, uh, we have not seen those limited one ounce coins ever come out around two or three bucks above spot. So we're going to be watching this monkey coin very carefully and we'll talk to you next time.